All right, ladies and gentlemen, it is, well, this is going to be a fun show. It's back to Monday. I know Monday, uh, but hey. We Good got, morning, man. Yeah, we got Bob over here. I'm Mark. And we have the captain. How you doing, guys? Long time no chat. <laughs> captain Andrew joining us. Thanks so much for being here. Well, thanks for Shanghaiing me. I mean, I just came well, in to do a little in, bit buddy. of paper. I came in to do a little bit of paperwork this morning for our uh, for my ad, and next thing I know, here I am. I'm sitting here. I've got the smile. The gets the warm, brother. I'm sitting here enjoying my cup of coffee. I got yeah. the microphone in my mouth, and I got Mark and Bob sitting here smiling at me. So you know what? Let's go for we it. We just figured one more, the more merrier. And uh, you know what? We could talk about some things we needed to talk about that uh, are kind of right up your alley. Yeah. yeah. Now, Captain Andrew, you've heard his voice. If you're like, trying, you're scratching your head. I think I've heard him before. Yep. Sailors Delight Back Bay Fishing. And uh, it's uh, hopefully been a good year. Well, we've had a lot of fishing this year. I mean, we're breaking numbers that I could never have imagined. I mean, we're sitting on 2,500 summer flounder for the year. Wow. You know, we've talked about the, the comeback of a lot of species in our waters in previous broadcasts. Mm -hmm. Sure, sure. And... It's still going. I mean, and we've caught more kingfish than I've ever seen in my life. I mean, last year we had, what, 15, 1,600 summer flounder. This year we're at 2,500. Wow. And we why, still have a, Why do you think that, that that is? I can't say that it's from less people being on the water with the whole COVID thing. Okay. Honestly, there's just as much boat traffic <laughs> out there. I think it is just a we're seeing a return on the regulations and the management. I'm not praising the state for its management, but I'm saying maybe we are seeing a return. Now I'm throwing back 90% of them. Our keeper ratio is probably 10%, but I mean that's next year it'll be even better. That's a significant <laughs> and and we're seeing tagged fish. We've caught several tagged fish from the New Jersey Littoral Society. Uh, I'm still waiting to get information back on it. Obviously, right. we, we retain the tag information and we contact the Littoral Society back. Uh, but like I said, I mean, we're seeing, I've, you know, in the Do six years. Do you think years, it's because of cabin fever? Oh, I have no doubt. I'm, And I've heard it from my customers. Now, we still enforce the mask regulation, but we still talk to our customers sure. on the boat. Uh -huh. And it's exactly that. As soon as they were allowed to like leave, yeah. they were coming out. Now, with, with uh, the governor had put a stranglehold on the recreational fishing and the, the, the four pay for higher uh, fishing industry here in New Jersey. I right. mean, they, they killed all of our, our late April and early May fishing. But as soon as we were allowed to go fishing, allowed. it's been it, it, the gas. Did you ever the think gas, you're, say that about your government? I, I'm, <laughs> I am pleading the fifth. Uh, <laughs> it's just been full throttle since. That was my wow. theory, though. You shot my theory down that the fish were just kind of like those months where you couldn't go out there like, da, 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 oh, things are okay. And then when you came out, but you said that there are just as many boats out there. Oh, so yeah. I have a new theory now because, you know, when you go out on the boat, people are talking on the boat, right? And the fish get all scared and they run. But we're talking to a now. <laughs> I don't hear anything. I'm talking to a man. Oh, he's a comedian. Oh, he's a comedian. The fish don't hear anything. Well, we were scared that the fish were going to have their masks on, too. But fortunately, yeah, right. we haven't seen that. <laughs> well, you know, uh, Jersey's testing the fish now, and some of them have tested positive for coronavirus. <laughs> is that coronavirus or is that corona beer? Yeah, right. well, Are they beer sending... battered before you test them? Yeah, right. If they're sending them to a facility in New Jersey that the NFL sent all their test results to, then we're all going to be positive. They're not beer battered now. They will be eventually. All right, so we're going to have a lot of fun here on the show uh, captain andrew with us of course and bob and uh, a little bit later on we'll have our uh, ask the morning show we'll drop that on you too and uh well, with some uh, interesting information coming up too during uh, the show so stick around we'll be right back all right the morning show happening right now and uh I, this is fun because uh captain andrew walked in at like six in the morning and what, were you were he's used to, to being up this early oh I'm, I'm always up even if i'm not working it's <laughs> six o'clock in the morning my feet hit the ground either because the dogs have decided that i need to be up or my body just says hey get up <laughs> you gotta get up now yep. i'll tell you what though you know uh, fishermen what do they say Fisherman on early bird always catches oh, a worm. Oh, early bird catches a worm or uh, early to bed, early to rise. Fish all day, make up lies. I think that was oh, the one. That's yeah. the best one. All right. Wait, what was that again? All right, all right, all right. All right. <laughs> early to bed, uh -huh. early to rise. Fish all day, make up lies. Oh, I love it. There you go. 
I love How it. so true is that when I think about it? <laughs> oh, I, not uh, at all. I'm the most honest man you'll ever meet. Uh, that's great stuff. <laughs> that is a that is a show topic we'll need to do sometime. Fisherman lies. Oh, without a doubt. But so we'll have to do it when the ladies aren't listening. When the, one of the uh, things. Oh, without a doubt. Yeah. One of the things I want to talk about, Mark. You know that we have Captain Andrew here. Is um, you and I we've grown up here. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, Captain, how long have you been here in the Wildwoods? Well, I grew, uh, I grew up vacationing down here. I officially transplanted late two thousands, but I mean, I grew up working in the fishing industry down here, down on Cardinal Avenue and Sweetbriar, and then right there over there at forty seven. Cardinal Avenue, that was uh, where Kurtz's. Kurtz's used yeah. to be. Oh, yep. oh I I yeah, I, yeah. I used to go yeah. from the 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 fishing boat dock there, sneaking through the back door because they would let me, <laughs> and get the Otis. Spunkmeyer corn muffin for me and a blueberry muffin for my best friend who was also working on the fishing boat. I dropped the two dollars on the register. They wouldn't even ring me up, and I would just go right, right out, out back out door. through the back door and cool. go back to the fishing boat. Do you nice. remember in North Wildwood snows? I remember the it, but is right, it's, yeah, it's where the parking lot is. It's now. where the parking lot is yeah. now. I remember it. I don't. I never actually spent much time in there, though. <laughs> friend yeah. of mine was, who, who owned it, and they're just good people, good family. Mm. Same with Kirch's. I went to school with Jimmy. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Love good people. And, uh, <laughs> you know, so we talk about we're kind of taking our trip down memory lane. Yeah. And I know we're up against a break. We got a short break this time. But <clears throat> I do want to bring to your attention there is a, an iconic, there's actually a couple of iconic boats that, you know, one recently, you know, left our island. Uh, but a few years ago, another one, which you know quite often when I bring it up to you. We're going to bring it up on the next, you know, on our next break here. But as a fisherman, I want your opinion, you know, in the business, I mean, mind you, what do you see happening on the island? We're going to talk about it the next break. You know, we have an iconic boat that is no longer here. Mark, so many childhood memories down the tube, you know, for everybody, generationally. Uh, Absolutely. And, And just when you're on the beach. And you see it go by. But we're going to talk about it next. You're listening to The Bob and Mark Show on 98.7 The Coast, WCZT, and 106.3 The Shore, WJSE. The Morning Show on this Monday. Boy, a special treat because Captain Andrew is here with us from Sailor's Delight Back Bay Fishing. Real fast before we jump into this, let's talk a little bit about... Uh, you're still you're still going out, right? Yeah, uh, we're coming up to the last week of summer flounder, but as soon as the end of this weekend, when the summer flounder season is closed, mm-hmm. we're switching over to bluefish and kingfish. Now that doesn't mean to say that we're not going to still catch flounder, but you have to throw them back. Ah, okay. And as the fall progresses, uh, as the kingfish disappear, the bluefish are still going to bite, but we'll all be targeting uh, the bluefish, the stripers, and the sea bass. Then See, the fish are told when to bite. Flounder's like stop, <laughs> stop biting flounder. <laughs> Uh, uh, and too. if you believe that, I got some great beachfront <laughs> property in Jackson Hole to sell you. <laughs> All so, right. W- before the break, we were talking about, you know, the remember wins, the, you know? the the type of nostalgia that when you come down to the Wildwoods for your whole life, you there's certain things that stay in there and you take home with you. Um, let me bring up the first boat that, um, quite honestly, as, as a kid and, you know, as a young adult, I miss having it there. And that was the Delta Lady. Yeah, the Delta Lady. Now, uh, I believe that boat is still running up in... Uh, Carolina? No, no. I want to say Keyport or uh, Captree. Okay. Uh, Long Island. But yeah, that whole corner used to be, you had the Silver Bullet, you had the Delta Lady, you had the Adventurer, and then you had the Sea Raider, the mm-hmm. two fishing boats. Now, the only one that's still there is uh, is the Silver Bullet. But it's not silver anymore. <laughs> oh, that hasn't, yeah. Uh, I remember, oh my, this is almost 15 years ago. I forget exactly when. I said one day, I was like, what boat is that? Yep. And it goes by the silver bullet. I'm like, well, what's, why is it orange? It's the exactly. silver bullet. It's the orange <laughs> I, uh, bullet. You know, and I do want to give, to give a shout out because, of course, the Delta Lady and the silver bullet were owned by a very, very sweet man, yeah. Mr. Bill Henfey, who was our mayor in North Wildwood, who had passed uh, several years ago. And uh, just a great mayor, great politician, yeah. and a great boater. And he had two iconic boats here that, you know, just really – you know, made people, you look for them. I mean, mm-hmm. you're, And I had just uh, run into his son probably about this time last year and had a long conversation with yeah. him, actually at a tackle shop up in Seattle Boulevard, Boulevard Bait and Tackle. So okay. his family's no, still good. involved in the county. I won't say what his son does, but right, yeah, right. it's yep. uh, it, 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 the family is still there. And 
everybody you know when you came over the bridge you saw that old-fashioned mississippi queen style steamboat absolutely it, 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 you felt like you were on an island yeah you know so you saw the boats and you knew you had a ride exactly yeah. now of course you know the point i'm getting for, towards everybody is the, the fact that uh i would have to say and uh, it's probably up for argument that the most iconic style boat has just left our island. Yeah, the big blue hole. Exactly. Well said. And that, of course, Mark, we all know it, the sightseer. sightseer yeah. Gone. That's, uh, 67 years, I think I heard. 67 years in one iteration or another, there has been a uh, the sightseer. Now, I know Everybody has been on that boat. Exactly. Exactly. You can't not have seen it at one point or yep. another because if you didn't recognize the, the big, big orange yeah the yeah. big seahorse on the bow yeah. with poseidon, poseidon on the top was, with the seahorses it was done so perfectly it yeah. was it, it's a it's a real shame and i don't know the circumstances whether it was the captain retiring or if the comp the business was affected by covid or the downward trend but it, it is it is an absolute shame it, it, it's sad because you you know, when you grow up down here and you see everything just looking so beautiful, I mean, just that what they've done in Wildwood alone yeah, looks phenomenal. Yeah. But with that boat missing, and, you know, we'll talk about it a little bit more and, uh, you know, maybe some memories of uh, being on it or when you've seen it. But, uh, Mark, I know we're up against the break, so yep. uh, let, let's, let's pay some bills. We'll continue along, and we'll be right back with more of the morning show. Captain Andrew joining us here this morning. So stick around. As we roll into our second hour here of the morning show on this Monday, pleasant surprise, Captain Andrew here from a Sailor's Delight Back Bay Fishing. And uh, still open, still rolling. If someone wants to reach you guys, how do they do that? Well, go ahead and give us a call at our phone for 609-827-8309. As all availability and reservations are done over the phone, mm -hmm. uh, if we don't pick up the phone right away do leave a message we will get back to you that and just means they're fishing yeah <laughs> yeah uh, that's the honest truth of it and we are still going to continue our three trip a day schedule until the end of flounder season which is the 19th and then we're going to switch over to the two days two trips a day okay and i just want people to know that we are still fishing i know a lot of businesses especially this year with labor day the the, the closed signs went in the windows but that's not going to be the case for us well, if you think about it you know captain andrew and i'm not you know saying this just of course to promote your business but people need to get out of the house and why not get out of the house on a boat out on the fresh water you're not contained in four walls you know you're out there you're enjoying you got the kids the family whomever you want mm -hmm. you got the fresh air man exactly i mean that to me is about the most safest trip i could think of and now i would think too that maybe you'd have a little bit more business than usual this month because there are schools that are doing the virtual learning or half the week you know the kids don't have to go in well, so come down the shore they stay at the, the shore house for a little longer well exactly and it surprises me that so many businesses are already closing for the yeah. season because i've heard it from a lot of my customers they say look i'm still working remotely the kids aren't going into school they're doing it remotely so if we can do everything using the wi-fi and still you be able to use the summer house that's what they're doing you can do it from the boat See, you know but the problem with that is and i and correct me if i'm wrong we've all experienced it sitting at home you become a lump of clay you just yeah. sit there you lose all motivation I mean, you really do. You sit around, you you start looking on your Amazon app on your phone for crazy crap to buy. Yeah. I yeah. mean, you really go stir crazy. And I totally think that, you know, it people need to break that. And I feel bad. Some people can't. I, I really, truly I, believe they can't. I had a, a tough go when the quarantine issues were still up because I'm a I'm a doer. Mm -hmm. And even recently, my girlfriend still told me, she says, you just don't know how to sit down. <laughs> it, it, it's really, really tough. Now, I well, can tell you just first, you know, firsthand, Mark and I, when we had to deal with it, we had to cancel our Aaron Express pub crawl. We had to cancel you know, a lot of things. We canceled yeah. and, you know, and so from that moment on and then what had happened is, you know, as Mark knows, I lost my daughter-in-law. My daughter-in-law passed yeah. away of cancer. Mm -hmm. So now uh, my son, four kids, you know, my life is upside down. So you take the COVID scenario with everything personal. Then you add the business aspect to mm -hmm. it of, or am I going to have a business? It was really, really bad. Oh, I don't think I ever want to get that dark and deep ever. 
Right. It was crazy. Yeah. Well, and that was the same thing with like with the fishing business. You know, for a lot of people that know my business know that I also worked in the Gulf of Mexico yep. in the oil industry, and I ended up getting back to New Jersey in March. I had to drive from Louisiana because the the quarantines messed up yeah. the, messed up my flights. So I was sitting in the house from March until early May when the governor finally did open up the fishing and we were able to. So from March to early May, there was that uncertainty with, am I going to be able to even have my business this year? It's, wow. And it's really, it's tough. And I know, you know, and we should talk about that. I mean, you know, we, there's, there's a lot of things that people, I think a lot of people experience what you and I, what Mark, yeah. what we all go through and nobody wants to talk about it. Yeah. And, uh, but you know, that being said, let's keep talking. You're listening to the Bob and Mark show on 98.7 <laughs> The Coast WCZT and 106.3 The Shore. It's the morning show here on this Monday. We're just having a talk here. We're just having a talk. It's really Well, good, and that's though. just it because it seems like I've been away for a while, mm -hmm. uh, you know, Captain, you've been away for a while. <laughs> yeah, yeah, from that boat to the house, maybe a little deviation to the grocery store, and that's about it. There you and go. that's it for our most people. Work, home, that's it. You know, it just seems that life had become so, I don't know if the word I'm looking at is surreal. Like, everything just became so, you know. Whoa, like, what's going, like, you wake up every day and you're like, it's not normal, but yet you're. Waking up in that, it's like Groundhog Day. Yeah, Maybe. yeah, it really was for a while there. Yeah. So I guess this is a dumb question. Uh, Captain Andrew is here, by the way, who's, who we're talking with, in case you're just tuning in, from Sailors to Light Back Bay Fishing. Um, for a while there, there was like, okay, only essential travel, right? If you yeah. have to go to the supermarket, this and that. So could you, Captain Andrew, just say, to heck with it, I'm getting in the boat and I'm going to just go out in the middle of the lake. You weren't, we weren't allowed. You couldn't. We, uh, they wouldn't allow you to the, do that. The fishing rules were bizarre. Like, in the beginning, Just, when they had the closures uh, for the beaches, the beach fishermen, mm -hmm. you were allowed to fish, but you weren't allowed to sit. You were allowed to surf, but you weren't allowed to swim. It was completely... Who the hell makes right. these rules? But you could, I can give you the answer to that. And he's up in Trenton, and I'm pretty sure one of the, one of the pages has his office's direct phone uh -huh. number. But when they finally opened up the, the for hire business, which is what my business is, is uh, everybody had to wear the mask, which incidentally, the mask regulations still are in effect if you can't socially distance. Right, right. But w the kicker was for the bigger boats was that they were only allowed to carry 10 passengers. Now, if you've got a 100-foot boat that's normally carrying 60, 70 passengers, yeah. you can't make the money on one 10 Guess people. Guess alone you're right. going to be eating a But for us, our recreational limit is 10 people so that never hobbled us we did six people in the very beginning just to get to be safe. to make yeah. sure that we were going to be even be able to get customers that wanted to go fishing right but when we found out right away that was just not the case people wanted to once the restrictions were lifted they wanted to fish Got it. they wanted to get out of the house i just thought it'd be neat to go out in the boat and if somebody stops you go well, oh it's heading to shop right yeah, I'm yeah. Just doing essential. I'm doing some essential. <laughs> yeah. I'm just taking a different path. That's all. Anyway. <laughs> oh man. Well, listen. I know we have a lot to talk about this year. We, you know, let's not forget. You know, Friday, of course, was a uh, 9/11, and you know, we did that really, really outstanding tribute. Which, uh, you know, Mark and your staff, you do a great job with that. Thank you so much on that. That was great. Well, yeah, a lot of credit going to Jimmy here from uh, working behind the scenes. Who, yeah, uh, who put that all together. And and then uh, a couple of topics that you know we do want to talk about, which. Uh, you know, there was some uh, talk, you know, this weekend that it just went by about the Bikers Weekend and uh, which really was motorcycle clubs. Was, yeah. it, well, it wasn't supposed to happen. Mm -hmm. You know, as well as uh, you know, we have an Irish <laughs> festival that's not <laughs> supposed to happen. No. We'll see what happens there. Not so right. we got lots to talk about here on the Bob and Mark Show. We'll be right back. The morning show. Now, of course, as you know, uh, Bob and I, we uh, had a back to school tour. We were doing a visit to Middle Township last Thursday and Friday was 9-11. And so we, we didn't get to talk about some of the events that, uh, you know, have been transpiring uh, here in Cape May County and in South Jersey over the, the last week or so. So, uh, yeah. Well, I want to just, you know, first thank everybody from, you know, the county down to every municipality out there who... Uh, you know, did a 9-11 ceremony, and right. most towns did. Um, and, of course, the county being the caveat to mm -hmm. it. Um, a lot of 
beautiful speeches, a lot of, you know, just that was a day, Mark, to sit there and, you know, Captain Andy, I think you would agree that you just, you don't really talk. You just listen and remember and just mourn. Mm. You mourn, you know, the death of, of so many beautiful people. And then, of course, you know, our own Andrew Alamino here in Cape May County, he, he passed away. Um, his dad was my doctor, so I get it. You yeah. know, it's and it's just uh, I just want to just say thank you because you know, I'd be remiss if I if I didn't. And I just yeah. want to say thank you to to everybody. Uh, I'm proud to live here in Cape May County and uh, I'm proud to be associated with so many beautiful people. Yeah, it's true. And, uh, you know, uh, of course, around that time, it was when we'd have our uh, the Fireman's Convention. Of course, yep. this year being 2020, everything's different. And there is no Fireman's Convention uh, this time around. But uh, we, we, get the, we get to see so many of those brave uh, uh, men and women. Who- I saw this humbling picture yeah. on Facebook of one of the fire trucks going over the bridge yeah. into yeah the brooklyn truck and they said that was the last known picture of that squad in their yeah. truck yeah that you know how if you do and you you kind of peruse through social media and you and you just kind of look i had to stop on that picture mm. it seemed like a long time and, and just look and i i i that's the type of stuff that we need to, to, to do every year to pay mm. tribute to the people who really just, if it wasn't for them, I don't know what we would be. Yeah, for me, it's the falling man photo. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That one's a very difficult one. And it's always, to me, it acts as a reset button because everybody can say, if I were in this situation, and I'm not just saying for September 11th attacks, I'm saying for any kind of major traumatic event everybody can say oh if i if i was in those shoes i would yeah but then when you see the reality of what that individual which to this day there's still a lot of what conflict about well there's a lot of conflict about his identity about who it actually was uh you can never say that you will know what you will do nope. if you were put in his shoes and there was three thousand people that day who were put in that position three thousand plus that you can never say, well, if I was, unless you can say you were. Could you imagine being faced with that decision and just the strength and the courage that that gentleman took to do what he did? <sighs> yeah. Yeah. Or, and again, with the same, the same resolve that the first responders exhibited. It, absolutely it, as people are flowing down the steps they're going up the yeah. steps yeah and it's uh you know every year you sit back and you can't help it you know put a tear in your eye that wow like, well there are people out there that are just so brave well and it's my generation's uh kennedy moment they say because everybody remembers where they were when kennedy was assassinated yeah. well my generation everybody remembers where they were when the attacks happened. That's exact. Yeah, that's exactly right. And exactly I will, right. I will say that somebody did say, uh, I, I saw somebody making a comment on social media and a lot of times you dismiss the stuff, but uh, they're saying, well, you know, here in 2020, um, you know, we have a lot of students now that are home and they're having to, you know, watch materials at home, Zoom, whatever. Yeah. What, what we really need to do is we really need to sit down uh, our children and have them watch some of this footage as real horrific time. as it is they should just yes. watch it real time and realize what so listen understand. i do it mark you, you're 100 correct mm-hmm. and i'm not saying i you are 100 correct because i do that with pearl harbor my dad's mm-hmm. birthday was on pearl harbor mm. so i have to remember pearl harbor every yeah. <laughs> every year yeah. but i do it in a way that i pay respect to everybody who lost their lives i mean it's you have to remember. Absolutely. We, as we say, we, we can never forget, but we really have to act upon that too. So, um, All right. So we will be back here in just a moment. Captain Andrew is here with us from Back Bay. Uh, I'm sorry. Sailors Delight Back Bay Fishing. And we will be right back in just a moment. Oh, yeah. The morning show as we are rolling on here on this Monday. Hey, I want to let everyone know coming up next hour, this is going to be uh, very interesting, very informative as we are moving into election season. We're going to have some very important information on, well, vote by mail, which is part of the new normal, I guess, for this year. Uh, But uh, we're going to cover some questions here and get some answers got it so i just want to let everybody know now of course um it is monday and that means it is ask the morning show time and if you ever have a dilemma that you would like any of uh us to address hey today we can get some responses from captain andrew here from uh sailors delight back bay fishing uh you can always send it to me or bob mark 
It's M-A-R-K at CoastalBroadcasting.com or Bob, B-O-B, at CoastalBroadcasting.com. There we go. Uh, I can't wait to hear this one. I had not... I've not gone online, to, so you're going to surprise me. Well, and they can also email me, but I'm not going to. I'm not. I'm just going to give them a, a really nasty, weird <laughs> response right off the bat. He's so. just going to delete them. Yeah. <laughs> I have nothing to do with the broadcast, but here, buy my buy Here's my one. tickets. Why am I getting a response saying life's good on the boat? Anyways, all right. So here we go. It says I have a close friend who is going through a divorce. She often sends me long text message messages about her situation i've asked her on many occasions to call me or come over to my place to talk because i find it difficult to be uh, empathetic in a text reply but she ignores me and continues sending long and repetitive text messages sometimes i choose not to respond and she becomes upset that i am not there for her what should i do this is from lauren in north cape may do you ever get the long, long texts? <coughs> Let me tell you uh, something. If there's anybody who knows anything about this right now, it's me. And I'm going to tell you right now, oh, this, this couldn't have come up at a better oh, time. Okay, good, oh, good, right? good. So, um, do I know this person? Oh, you know this oh, person. I do. Okay. Uh, he was just here. Like, you know who I'm talking about. <laughs> One of my dearest friends. You know who I'm talking yeah, about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, All right. he's going through. A mean, oh. nasty. Oh, yeah. Now, here's the thing. He doesn't have kids. He doesn't own property. But this woman is mean. Hell hath no scorn. Oh, like a woman just scorn. Mean. If you met her, you would just look at her and go, wow, she's mean. Okay? Yeah. So you look at, you know, but again, same scenario, guys. She's, she's like sending out these long texts, long-winded texts, you know, on Facebook Messenger, the people that really don't care, well, really don't care. And at, there comes a point when you just got to say, back off. This is your personal stuff. Don't yeah. air it out. Well, that's the problem with social media is everybody's got this free feeling to believe that everybody needs to know or wants to know about every aspect of their life. And the reality is, is you just don't. You, you don't. And so when you look at what's going on in this person, I know how this person feels, Mark. Yeah. You got to tell her to knock it the heck off. Stop texting me. This is your stuff. I know you're going through some troubled times and you're fighting and you probably have nobody else to talk to, but go see a shrink. Just leave me alone. This all started when they made it easier to text. Remember back in the days before like the smartphones where you had to like the... Oh, you had, you had like had four different options sh- per button. You, you know? had to hit shift and... <laughs> well, and, like, <laughs> I tried to, I for a while tried to be that holdout and it just one day it just came, I came to the realization that it was easier to just text some people yeah. than Talk to them. get them on the phone because you're not going to catch them and you want to say something a little bit more detailed than you would want to leave on a voicemail. Uh, but in regard to the, in, in regard to, what would you say, Lauren from... Yeah, Lauren yeah. in North Cape May getting these long texts. Like... You're you're trying to be supportive, but you gotta you gotta put your foot down. You tell the person like, look, call me or leave me out of it. Ooh. It's not her divorce to deal with. Well, All right. In this particular scenario, I want to I want to go on this. I know you're up against the break. Yep, we're good. Uh, there are a lot of things out there. Let's talk about what some of the listeners said. Uh-huh. But there's a lot more to this, Mark. So yes. let's keep talking about. All right, it. we're gonna keep investigating this. We'll be back. Ask the morning show is on. Oh, the morning show. Having fun here. Boy, this is this has been a hoot. Uh, of course, uh, Captain Andrew is here uh, joining us from Sailor's Delight Back Bay Fishing. And uh, we're going to be talking a little bit more about how you can get out on a fishing excursion. You still can do it. We'll talk about that a little bit more in just a bit. Uh, right now, though, we've got the Ask the Morning Show that is on. And basically, this comes from Lauren in North Cape May. She has a close friend going through a divorce. This close friend sends out, like, books when she goes to text Lauren. And Lauren's like, look, I don't have time to read all this stuff. Yeah. Come on, man. And I-, I will say this. They're making it too easy to text now because now you can even just talk into your phone. Mm-hmm. And it, you know, it takes I don't recommend that. <laughs> it takes your words and puts them on there. And uh, well, Have you done that yet? You know what? I've hit it by accident. Uh, that's what I wanted yeah. to know. <laughs> I, I've done speech to text a few times. I, I've done it with a client, uh-huh. and the client called me back and said, "Excuse me," oh, and I'll, uh, I'll like, "I'm sorry," and they go, "Bob, uh, we know you did not send this." 
text message purposely. Oh, no. Um, <laughs> you might, and they're laughing, and you might want to go back and read it. Oh. So when I read this text message, and again, it was in the car, voice to text. You just think it's going to work. Yeah, it didn't uh, go so well. Yeah, yeah. Well, I've learned, apparently, according to my girlfriend, I speak funny. And the reality is, is I'm from, you know, Bucks County, the rural end up in Pennsylvania, and I grew up around the Mennonites and the you, Pennsylvania You know, I was going to say something to you. You do talk funny. Oh, I do talk funny. <laughs> throw, gran <laughs> throw grandfather down the stairs his shoes, you know, <laughs> that old Pennsylvania Dutch backwards speak. And I've tried to do the text to talk. I can't do it because it'll come out with extra syllables and you know hey i went to bicycle and you know or or hey i'm stopping at acme rubber baby bunky bumpers or something like that uh, well i'm going to give you some <laughs> advice and everybody listening right now i'm going to say this okay. if you're going to do speech to text try not to text profanity because what happens is when you're texting your smartphone <laughs> saves your keywords that you use yes, all the time that's true and therefore will take its sound that you're, that it might think you're saying, and put it in a text. Whereas I think my phone doesn't think I curse enough because I try and curse <laughs> on the phone and it comes out as duck. Yeah, Mine does. People say, hey, think I have an obsession yeah. with ducks and sheets. Ducks? Oh, well, no, I got asterisks. I you got see, asterisks all over my. You get to see ducks on the water, so that's probably. Oh, sure, that's exactly it. Yeah, oh, no, what no. the duck? Yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. So, I don't give a duck. <laughs> so uh, some of our listeners are writing in. We have Paul, who says, "Put your foot down. You are attempting to be supportive, but after all, you know Paul, huh? Uh, but after all, it isn't your divorce. If she wants your empathy, she needs to meet your comfort level." Uh, let's see here, Casey, who says. Pick up the phone and call them. If I get a long emotional text message from a friend, that's typically how I quote unquote reply. Also, sometimes friends need to vent. So being there to listen is part of friendship, even if it is reading a book that someone texts you. That's an interesting thought. You know, another thing, Mark, that, that, that could be viable in this situation is yeah. you know how like now when people text you you can actually like put a thumbs up on the text yeah or, ha ha or love the text maybe that's what you do you just don't reply you just put a thumbs up on the text oh, oh they got just, it see, uh, uh, or just message back at k yeah that sends me into a murder rage you know how time how many times people get mad at me they'd write a book and i'd write like Okay. Oh, okay. Okay. You know, or, yeah. Well, I spent uh, all my time texting you, and that's all you have is an okay. Agreed. Are you mad at me because you you didn't even put the O K? <laughs> you just went K. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it's so catty. I, like, I will go out of my way to just put two Ks, or maybe, ah. maybe as an adult, I should actually respond. But no, sometimes if you're in a hurry, just hit. Uh, just because K. I hate when somebody just sends me K after I send them a long yeah. text message. See, I, like, it I'm, works. <laughs> it drives you crazy. I just, by instinct, just put KK, just because it's a little bit different. So that's my advice to the to the to the the, oh. the person here. Just responding K. I hit. gotta I gotta rebuke the Bob. Hit Please, the Lauren, don't just. Just K them back. <laughs> Hit the response bubble with ha ha, and then you'll never hear from them again. <laughs> All right. No, 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 no. Don't do that. All right. We'll be back with more in just a moment. Stick around. All right. It's the Bob and Mark and Captain Andrew show. We just we're just making Captain Andrew part of the show now. Oh, it's funny. Awesome. Walked in. He he's he's hostage. I do believe the word is Shanghai. Yeah, I believe so. <laughs> I just I just came to give you money. Why are you guys dragging me? So we're talking about you know uh, our dilemma with our our caller and uh, you yeah. know, ask the morning wake up and texting and all that stuff and uh, real quick funny text story about how people should not just assume what texts mean. Right. Well, my mother, she's 73 years old. She texts and she does it pretty well, but she is very ignorant to the fact and stubborn to the fact that what her texts are meant to say and her abbreviations are oh, what yeah. they're supposed to mean. Not on the trend that everybody else knows what they are right. <laughs> or what right. they mean. Yep. So what my mom will end every little conversation via text with is a LOL. And I'm like, what are you laughing at? It means lots of love. Yeah. Oh, okay. No, it doesn't. It means <laughs> laugh out loud. No, it means lots of love. So I dropped it. No problem. <clears throat> Move forward. My grandfather passed away. And on Facebook, everybody's, you know, I'm sorry. My condolences. Yeah. My condolences. My condolences. Well, my mother, in, you know, went on and for my grandfather said, 
uh, oh, oh my God, I'm so sorry. You know, love to your family, LOL. Oh. Oh. Yeah. 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 So just know what you're, and I know you want to, <laughs> Captain Eddie's like, he's back and going, I'm trying to hold it in, trying to hold it in. Well, because you see, you see the car accident, you're driving up to the car accident, yep. you can't steer, you know you're going to add to the you car accident, stop. so you know Rubber what's going to happen. You know, you know how that story's going to go. Oh, that's, well, every once in a while you see the, you know, maybe once every two, three months, you see the clickbait of like text message mess ups, yep. and yeah. you have to hit it, and that's like, the, lots of love is one, and, or one of the ones is uh mom why do you keep putting wtf at the end of every ah. one of your you know where where's the the you know where's, where's, the, you, where's the father yeah. where's yeah, the family and, no mom that's not what that means yeah, right. dot, 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 dot. with the whole generation like the older generation is now this is how it's going to be and i'm like but you don't understand mom lol does not mean lots of love uh, i mean come on and i'm going to add to this because they're making me more confusing how many emojis are there now? Oh, my There's Lord. There's like a bazillion of them. I don't know what half of them mean. Yeah. Uh, listen, I want to know, and we'll end with, we're going to talk with, you know, you know, Captain A, but I want to end with this little comment on Momijis, or what do they call Mo Emojis. Mo Emojis. Emojis. I eat a Momiji. Um, <laughs> oh, have been there in a while. Oh, that's great. I know. Who put, and what is the meaning, and who would ever want to use this the eggplant text. Uh, well, I don't know if I'm allowed to explain it's, it's, it, Well, it's sexual. I understand. Yeah. But between the eggplant text, <laughs> the peach, and the squirting <laughs> of water, Apple's got a dirty mind. I well, no, I want to know who... <laughs> Gave my mother a poop emoji pillow, and why is it on her couch in her living room? That's I want to so know which of my family members thought that that was a brilliant idea. Uh, that was from the Bob and Mark show. Her, sorry, I asked her about it, and she was innocent about it. So I just, I was like, "Look, I'm dodging this bullet." My mother doesn't text. She goes on Facebook, and it's the same thing. She doesn't necessarily always know what she's putting on, and it's all never meant to be malice, so we've never had to have the conversation. But yeah, I know there's a family member that has given her that pillow. I will find you. <laughs> <laughs> Move it to the bathroom, because that could be inspiration. Um, let's before, but, um, <laughs> yeah, before we wrap it up, I want everyone to know how they can get in contact with you, uh, Captain Andrew, over at Sailor's Delight Back Bay Fishing. Well, like I said, we are still fishing, and we're going to keep fishing as long as we can, whether it be October, November, or December. Whenever the fish disappear, that's when we'll stop. But you can reach us at... 609-827-8309. Uh, you can also visit us at sailorsdelightfishing.com. And don't forget to find us on Facebook, Sailors Delight Back Bay Fishing, LLC. If you want to make a reservation, go ahead and give us a call. All right. Tell you what, Captain Andrew, it's been a pleasure having oh, you here. Oh, it's always my friend. fun. Yeah. And uh, I know we're going to be trying to organize a uh, fishing cruise, a little <laughs> boat, a little trip coming up soon. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. We'll get you guys out there. Yep. And uh, that'll be all it. So there you go, Mark. Yeah. Now, uh, uh, these guys are going to go, go about their business. We're going to get you some more important information next hour about vote by mail. Ooh, Kate make good information. Yeah. Yep, absolutely. So, and also, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll have it all coming up for you. So stick around. More of the morning show coming up.